think we're the only animal that seems to need to ornament ourselves. We seem to need to put things on us, and some of us need to make things that uh, get put on us. I was drawn to Philadelphia because it was a old industrial city with a lot of history. I like the landscape. I like the vistas. I think it's beautiful even in its decayed state. It offers daily visual complexity, which I guess I feed on that. It's a buffet. It's a visual buffet for a visual thinker. This field has been a design laboratory in the middle of a very busy city. These plants will be in a tiara that I'm creating called a tiara of useful knowledge. The American Philosophical Society, which was one of the first institutions in Philadelphia, they wanted to promote useful knowledge. That concept of knowing what may be important in the future really resonated with me. This is the milkweed plant. The sap is a very sticky substance that's useful for adhesive. Bumblebees. I've started paying attention to grasses. Switchgrass could be used for automotive fuel. Look at these wonderful things. <laughs> Some people consider these weeds the worst weeds in the world, but I think they're beautiful. By drawing this leaf, I'm getting an understanding of the forms. The connections of the leaf to the stem is always a surprise to me. By looking closely at nature, I have the best teacher possible. I'm Separating each of these leaves, I'll glue them onto a sheet of silver. I'm going to get some more glue on there. It dries pretty quickly. I studied art at Western Michigan University, and one professor suggested, why don't you start drawing with the saw? Why don't you bring your art into your metal? This stack of drawers is a glimpse of the journey that I've been on as an artist from the early 70s to last week. This was work that I did in the early 1980s. All of these have one rock in the necklace. People started sending me rocks from absolutely everywhere. This was my first clue at the power of nature. Now I'm going to go to the rolling mill. This is kind of like a printer's press. Now it's left a very subtle impression of the veining. I just have to get the glue and the actual leaf off. Then you have a nice piece of silver that is an echo of the leaf. For about seven years, I produced a fair amount of volume, and I was getting some coverage in the fashion magazines. Then at a certain point, I decided I needed to stop and refuel and begin thinking about a new body of work. That's when I started um, a huge amount of research on the history of jewelry seeing how it was expressed in different countries in different time periods. Whether it was just a simple floral wreath or a skin marking, it has always been with us. I need to look at my color photocopy because I'm not sure exactly where that stem comes in. Let's see. Yeah. Soldering. This is the cool part. 
you have two separate pieces of metal and by adding a piece of metal with a lower temperature, you join them. I've done all this research. Then I decided I needed to do work that was authentic. It had to be of its place, of its time. So I thought, OK, now I'm going to narrow down, and it's got to be within a block of my studio. It's going to be somewhere within this block. It has to be here. If it's not here, it's not real. Is it tire treads? Is it sidewalks? Is it pigeons? What am I going to use? What am I going to use? I live in a neighborhood with a lot of problems. So I thought I had to look at that. And then I realized, here it is. It's always at my door. Every morning when I come in, I find a few laying there, these little plastic containers for crack cocaine. About that time, I had found a really beautiful bone necklace. It's about 1,000 years old. It was made by a Native American. The person had a dinner and carved it and made an ornament. So it was a common, readily available material. The one that was my common, readily available material were the crack files. These pieces are the plastic caps of the crack files cast into gold. As I started doing this work, people started responding to it. Some people are troubled by it. But I have to bring these issues up, and it's not going to please everyone. The survey of the sidewalk for City Flotsam could get a little depressing. It's tough stuff. And I asked, what's beautiful here? I don't live by the Grand Canyon. I have to find my beauty where I live. So that's when I started to look at the weeds across the way from the studio. So much of my work is the balance of man and nature, how much we rely upon the plants around us. I'm still in the process of working on the tiara of useful knowledge. I think that making things with your hands, it's a human core instinct, a really important part of us. And I think if we pay attention to the tactile power used in craft, we will come to realize those are probably the best and the purest values to have.